Hello everyone, I'm Brian Croy Dragon and welcome to my current Vox Adventures episode where we will be making a pilgrimage to Latin's town of Valeria Bay. And given the fact that it's currently day, it seems that we'll be starting this pilgrimage underwater. It's relatively simple, just head southeast. Just head southeast and I will <coughs> hit Valeria Bay eventually. <coughs> eventually. Let's see here. <coughs> Finally, can get out of the water. Yeah, yeah, iron crate. Hey, Alex. What? What? You're fine. I'm not exactly sure how many videos this will take, uh, maybe quite a few. 
I'll be going for a roughly 30 minute recording tomorrow. I'll be taking Wednesday off. So it's possible I might be continuing on this journey well into next week. Actually, let's uh, speed up the journey by traveling on horseback. Huh. Well, I don't see any other shore, therefore, boat. Yay, I'm a sailor. Whoops, uh, I only went off course there. Is someone playing a game of questions? Dear God, how large is this ocean? <laughs> huh. I've reached Tormentia, where the hell is my boat? There we go. With any luck, I will not be going through any deserts. Of course, I'll probably have to pull up the map uh, when I when I'm next taking shelter from the sun. I mean, if if the sun comes up now and I'm nowhere near any water for me to continue with my journey. And yeah, I'm going to be taking shelter. I won't be able to continue going, so I may as well get the map.
one thirty. We got plenty of time. I'd go around, but I don't want to risk accidentally going off course. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. There's another con It's not a desert! Oh god. Okay, passing through Fizzle Mirror. Time to race in the sun. Okay, uh, take shelter here. <coughs> now let's see about that map.
Okay, let's see here. Okay, now I am <coughs> right near Red House Mr. Krabs. Red House Mr. Krabs. Riverside. Oh, let's see, where the devil is it? Uh, Sloth Preserve. Katzenberg. Diamond Eye, Threepwood, Arabor, that's Katzenbrook again, Valeria Bay, there it is, Yeah, keep heading southeast and I should hit it. Eventually. Eventually. Let's see what's uh, on the schedule of places I'll be coming across. Oh jeez, better uh, get a bit deeper in the water. Okay, let's see here. Oh, if it would only rain. Rain, rain, please let it rain.
How about we, um... I'll just open iTunes and... Pick something to listen to. I mean, something that presumably won't be hit by copyright. Listen to one of the guides from Microsoft Ancient Lands. Start with Alexander the Great. We march at dawn. My health is no concern of yours. These old wounds are nothing but scratches from a kitten. I'll be ready. See to it that you are. Generals, they'd plan and replan till the pyramids <coughs> crumble if I let them. But no one's going to stop me, Alexander the Great, from leading my army to victory. Click me and I'll tell you something of my amazing accomplishments. My brutal father, Philip of Macedon, taught me to fight. He was ruthless, but he knew how to train an army. He showed me how to organize the infantry in deep ranks that marched forward like a spiny monster, with spears longer than three men are tall. By the time I was 16, I was leading such armies myself. Of course, military training alone wasn't enough for a king's son. My father brought Aristotle, the greatest philosopher in all of Greece, to instruct me. He taught me politics, science, and art. To this day, no matter where I go, I carry a copy of the Iliad with me. I even take poets and artists on my campaigns. Some people even began to worship me. I find it useful for them to think of me as a descendant of Zeus and Achilles. I've even had my face put on our Greek coins, an honor once reserved only for the gods. You think me too proud? Remember that even the priests of Thebes declared me a son of Zeus. Believe that I am a god or not. It really doesn't concern me. For someday the greatest monument to my glory will be the cities that bear my name. Work has just begun on the grandest Alexandria of all in Egypt. A lighthouse will guide ships into its harbor. And soon, scholars from across the world will study in a magnificent library there. I wasn't even 30 when I succeeded where even my father had failed. I conquered Persia. But don't think, as many do, that I hated that empire in the east. It was that arrogant old fool there, great King Darius, that I despised. I wanted to rule their empire, not destroy it. Why do you think I left some of their governors in place? To show my respect, I myself adopted Persian customs and even married a Persian woman. Persia was just the beginning, of course. In just a few years, I led my armies of conquest from the eastern shores of the Black Sea to the Indus Valley. Under my leadership, the entire world learned the glories of Greek culture and to respect the power of Alexander. What? You think my campaign in India failed? My army rolled over King Porus as it has over so many enemies. But my troops, weary of fighting and long marches in the heat, would go no farther. I was willing to continue, despite many fresh wounds, and risk my life again in battle. But they would not budge. And so, still undefeated, I am leading them home through the deserts. But I shall return. I'll fight my way clear across Babylon again if I have to. But first, I must settle a few problems with my governors back in Macedonia. Now I need another drink and a few hours rest. My fever is raging again. Click me and perhaps another guide can show you something more of my glorious accomplishments. Yeah, better performance than Colin Farrell's. <coughs> Yeah, we'll listen to another eventually.
Just go under this place. Oh crap! Okay, as soon as <coughs> I'm out from under this place, it's in the boat and away we go. Those guardians don't care if you're a vampire. You're just another target for them. I guess I was a little premature in getting the boat ready. Holy crap, how big is this place? Yeah, I've hit the 27 minute mark and uh, I'm not exactly sure how far I am to Valeria Bay. Have I reached the halfway point? Am I not even halfway? I mean, it's the journey that counts, not the destination. I mean, I know where I'm going, but I guess it's what I see. Yeah, it's going to be what I see on my journey there. Okay, let's see here. Just keep going and eventually we'll reach land. <coughs> I actually uh, really liked Richard Burton's performance as Alexander the Great. Out of the Alexander the Great movies that I have, his uh, is my favorite. I mean, sure, it takes cues from the Alexander romances, such as having Nectar Nabo II uh, in Philip's court at Alexander's birth, and, um,. Having Roxanne as Darius's daughter. But on the other hand, the film Alexander seems to take a lot from Mary Reynolds' uncritical and romanticized Alexander the Great novels and uh, the Mondo TV film uh, the Mondo Anim. No, ugh, the other animation film is, um, this is how took some liberties with history. Because Darius did not order Philip's assassination.
We don't go around, we go over. Of course, I'm not going to knock on Mondo Animation, but, uh, <coughs> their Charlemagne series was, well, I haven't exactly watched the whole thing. I watched a compilation film and, uh, one episode, but it was quite good, very good, uh, actually had a lot of research put in. And it really didn't take that much liberties. You know, they had decided to make a animated series about Alexander the Great, and they probably would have done better. Of course, I should state that the first episode of Charlemagne doesn't even feature Charlemagne, uh, Actually, I think they just chose Charlemagne because he's the mo as the title name because he's the most famous f Frankish king. Yeah, he's the most famous figure in that series. I mean, it starts with the sack of Rome of 410, which was long, long before Charlemagne was born. I mean, Charles the Great died <coughs> during the early Viking Age. And that started in 793. So it really doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah, maybe it does. Maybe it's about more than Charlemagne. And that compilation film was just to focus on Charlemagne. And I'll actually give credit to whoever that was providing the voice for Alexander, uh, for Microsoft Ancient Lands. Uh, Alexander's voice was actually described as being harsh, and that, and indeed the voice does, uh, the actor is using does indeed sound harsh. Hello, Enderman, don't attack me. Don't look back. I'm not going that way. Uh, okay, we need shelter. But still, if I'm taking shelter, I can always direct myself to the direct I can always point myself in the direction I'm heading. 
There we go. Now let's just dispose of less and uh, Let's pull up the map. No, I'm not even. I'm far from Green Leaf, but I'm also far from F Valeria Bay. But maybe I am at the halfway point. Would you call this the halfway point? Or would you call the. wherever that is, right there, the halfway point? I think I might be at the halfway point of oh, zombie drawing in the sun. Uh, okay, another guy to listen to, Almos. Hey, over here. Hi, I'm Almos. Somebody said you want to see what life's like for a kid in Egypt. Well, for uh, no, I never ones involving it, kids no are uh, hit and miss. My dad's a farmer. So I have to help him every day, planting, or weeding, or harvesting. Everyone's taking a break now, so I can show you around. Just click me and we'll get started. Here's my house. It's just a regular place. I guess it's a little bigger than some of my friends' houses, but Dad's a really good farmer. I usually share a room with my brothers, except in summer, when we sleep up on the roof to keep cool. I'm sure glad I don't sleepwalk. We've also got a pretty big kitchen, and even our own shrine. We have to say prayers every day to honor the gods. We say a lot of prayers to Horus. He protects regular folks like us from crocodiles, scorpions, and other things that can hurt us. But sometimes I think he gets too busy. The other day, one of my best friends was waiting on the riverbank when a crocodile saw him. Praying to Horus didn't help him run fast enough, and now he's short of toe. <laughs> Horus didn't help my grandfather either. A mean hippo got him. We gave amulets to the embalmer to wrap up in Grandpa's mummy. He fixed up Grandpa the best he could. Then there was a big funeral. We stuck everything of Grandpa's we could find in the tomb with him so he could use it in the next world. I hope it helps him. Most of the time, us kids have a lot of fun. I'm really good at leapfrog and tug of war, and I've got a bunch of wooden boats and soldiers. I bet I can beat you at Snake and Sinet. Yesterday, I caught seven of my brother's kelps and reached the kingdom of Osiris in just six throws. You think that's easy? You obviously don't know how to play Sinet. My uncle mm -hmm. Rahotep made me my favorite toys and games. He's got all kinds of tools. I even help him make stuff sometimes, like a table for my room. I'd love to be a carpenter like him when I grow up, but Dad says he needs me to help out on the farm. Oh, I'm supposed to meet Dad down at the river to catch some ducks. Wanna come? Here's our boat. My dad and I built it ourselves out of papyrus reeds. We use it for fishing, bringing supplies from the next town up the river. And sometimes we just go out on the river to cool off. We're going to sail all the way down to the big market tomorrow. I'd bring you along, but we need all the room for the goats. The Nile goes right by our farm. In fact, just about everybody lives close to the river. We need the water for the canals, and we use the mud for all kinds of stuff, like pots and even building bricks. I wash my hands down here, especially after I've touched the pigs. Everyone bathes here, even our animals. I hate to live downriver. Hey, all this talking is making me thirsty. Let's go get something to drink. How about some milk? We can get it fresh from the cows back on our farm. I'll hold the cow, and you tug the udders. I guess cows are my favorite animals next to our cats, of course. Cows make farming a lot easier. They pull plows and help stomp the seeds into the ground after we plant. The farmers around here always brag about how many cows they have. I guess we're pretty well off. We've got eight. Look, I'd better get back to my chores. The sun's going down. And you'd better start home yourself. It gets really dark out here after sunset. Click me again if you want another guide to help you. Maybe I'll see you again. Bye. Uh, okay, uh, another. And it's Brasidus who was voiced by whoever it was who voiced almost, so. Hey, you. How did you get in here? What's the password? Well, okay, I guess I can let you in, but you better not try anything. 
I may be just a kid, but I've already had a few years of military training, you know. Everything's kind of peaceful these days anyway. The Olympics are about to start, and there's a truce all over Greece so the athletes can get to Olympia. Oh, my name's Brasidus. No, I'm not old enough to compete yet, but someday I will, and I'll win, too. Look, if you want to stick around, click me, and I'll teach you about Sparta, the toughest part of Greece. Everyone here is a warrior. All the guys, I mean. Our cities don't have walls because we don't need any. We're always on alert and ready to fight to the death to defend ourselves. And it's not just Athens we have to watch out for. All these slaves around here, we have to keep an eye on them too. They've started revolts more than once, and it's not easy to keep them in line. Here in Sparta, people have kids for one reason, to make sure there's always enough soldiers. That means there's no room for weaklings. Guess what happens to every new baby? Well, the parents take it to the city leaders. Those guys make sure it's healthy, and if it's not, it's left outside of town to die. But I was strong. As soon as I turned seven, I went off to military school. Nah, girls stay home. But they have to exercise a lot and stay strong too, so they'll have healthy babies when they get married. Around here, we don't have much time for kid games. Sure, a lot of us learn to read so we can follow orders, but we don't waste time on poetry and philosophy like Athenian boys. We're too busy training and fighting. Every once in a while, we sing and dance or go hunting just to keep our spirits strong. But nobody fools around with pottery or carpentry. That stuff's for slaves. Those big feasts you've heard about, they're for softies like those rich kids in Athens. I barely get enough food to live on. The instructors say if we're hungry, we should just find more food on our own, even if we have to steal it. But if you sneak off to some farmer's field, you better not get caught. Last year, a farmer nabbed a guy in my unit. When he got back to camp, the instructors beat him just to teach us a lesson about being taken prisoner. The guy died a couple days later. We spend most of our time naked and barefoot. That's so we stay used to the cold. And we only bathe a couple of times a year. But I still care about how I look. See, my hair's long, but it's neat. When I'm 12, I'll get one cape to wear. But when I'm 20, I'll join the real army and I'll get a bright red cloak and plumed helmet. Girls my age don't have many clothes either. Usually short dresses. Not like those long things girls wear in other places. I guess I'll marry one of them after I grow up and finish a couple of tours of duty away from home. Then I'll pick a wife who is just as tough as I am. That way our sons will become strong and powerful warriors like me. Nope, I'll still have to live in the barracks. My wife will stay home by herself most of the time, except for our kids, of course. We have to fight while we're pretty young, but I can't visit the marketplace to vote until I turn 30. All Spartan men are equals, you know? We're the only real citizens around here. We rule some of the people who live nearby, too. They live in their own villages and can serve in our army. But the people that we took this land from are our slaves. You think I'm scared to go into battle? I can't wait. See, before a big fight, we sacrifice a goat, play songs, and put on wreaths of flowers. No, we don't use a bunch of fancy weapons, and we don't ride on horses. We march like men and fight with spears. Well, I guess I am a little nervous. Sometimes when we're practicing, those long spears break, and boy, then you're really in trouble. Look, I've got to report into my commander, and you better get moving before somebody else asks you the password. Not everybody's as nice as me, you know. Click me to pick another tour. Yeah, I'll see you around. I'm uh, quite honest with how life was in Sparta. The makers of Microsoft Agent Nance only pulled no punches. That's what I was uh, I actually never owned that CD. I, ha I have Microsoft Dangerous Creatures. And keep in mind, the Microsoft Home series was <clears throat> meant for everyone. Uh, for the most part. I'm not exactly sure about 500 nations. Uh, I 
be a bit adult, or maybe something that you probably high school age you start with, uh, but otherwise it was, <coughs> it was a pretty, um, pretty much for everyone, an educational thing. Oh dear, let's water. But yeah, really, there was no attempt to uh, get around how brutal the uh, Sparta was. Because that's only how it was. It was brutal. Uh, The Spartans were basically insane barbarians. And there's been some unkind comparisons, uh, such as comparing them to the Scottish. I mean, the Scottish are a thousand times more civil. <coughs> the Scottish are a thousand times more civilized than the Spartans ever were. And, uh, I mean, there's always been a bit of that stick martyr. Athens is England, and, uh, Sparta is Scotland, I mean, and then you've got... Portraying Athens like the northern United States and Spartan like the southern United States, and I can definitely see that. The Spartans were kind of odd anyway. I mean, a two king system. How does that even work? Uh, it's like having there be two prime ministers or two presidents at the same time. Actually, maybe it does work. I mean, obviously, never. There's been examples of co rulers uh, throughout history.
The 300 Spartans is only one of the unsung classics of epic film. I mean, it gets overshadowed by that Schlockfest 300. Damn. I mean, Frank Miller, idiot that he is, uses childhood memories of the 300 Spartans, something that he loved as a kid but hates as an adult, uh, to make 300. Well, maybe if we put some research into his work, it would actually be a good read. Maybe in the film it would actually be something other than schlock. The 300 Spartans is really more historically accurate. Uh, it's got the two king system and sure... Le uh, Le Leonidas, Leonidas, however you want to pronounce it, is still played by an actor under 60 because the real uh, Spartan king was 60 when he died at Thermopylae. But otherwise, it's really more historically accurate. Uh, there's a lot more figures from history there. Uh, Xerxes looks as he should, not like uh, some. I don't know what that is in the movie 300. Frank Miller is an odd, odd man. Uh, probably insane. Hates every Batman movie because it doesn't use any of his work in it, but then again, he never created Batman, so why shouldn't they focus on the work of one creator? Batman was created by artist Bob Kane and writer Bill Finger, not uh, Frank Miller. And that is all for today, everyone. I am Brian Croydragon, signing out. Stay Shrey!